Hi, this is uh, Jorge from Team JVS, and today we have the great honor of interviewing Bobby, who is the writer and director of the new movie, Lamborghini, The Man Behind the Legend. Um, Bobby, first and foremost, just want to say congratulations. I've seen this movie now three times um, and just keep loving it more and more. So I'm a, I'm a huge car junkie. So this one really, um, you know, tugged at me in the right way. So first and foremost, you know, how... So how well, let, me, let me thank you. My goodness, three times. I love that. Thank you. No, no, no. It's so I'll, I'll be, I will be brutally honest with you. The first time I saw it, um, I think the, the car person in me was expecting a, a more, how can I put this kind of like a more action packed, uh, rivalry between Lamborghini, obviously Ferruccio and Enzo, you know, cause in my head I was, I had kind of like my precept motion of how I thought this movie was going to go. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. first time I saw it, it was, you know, in my head, I was thinking this was picking up uh, almost by, you know, like the the third act of this movie, basically, when you kind of start seeing a lot of the heated battle. Um, and it wasn't until the second time that I saw it that I I truly fell in love with just the story and the depiction of it um, and the way that you were able to kind of show the struggles of this man who, for better lack of term, sacrificed everything like his family life you know all all these hardships like just to have like this name out there um so That's you know yeah so and I guess for me it took me you know like I said that second time and then the third time I saw it it was just just enjoying it uh you know just being brutally honest just just truly enjoying it so with that I guess I will ask what was I guess, what was your inspiration behind, you know, writing a story about obviously Ferruccio, which, you know, as we all know with the movie, it, it's he has a very intriguing story to say the least. But but what was it that brought you towards this film? Well, uh, aside from the fact that uh, I was asked to consider writing and directing it by Andrea, who's the head of Yevolino Entertainment, and Lady Monica Bacardi, and I, I thank them for bringing me the project. I spent, I guess, close to six months researching. You know, I grew up in New York City in Manhattan. I didn't have a car until I was 21 years old uh, because, you know, you don't really need a car in New York. Uh, so I had to really do a lot of research, and I had two assistants who helped me with that tremendously. And the more... I went into it, the more it became clear to me that this movie had to be a look inside the mind of a genius, someone who sees things the rest of us do not see, yeah. or aspires to things the rest of us are afraid to aspire to. And not being a genius, that required a lot of research to try to understand uh, you know, how a genius might think. And then that led to the idea as well, if you do think like that, if you are seeing things other people just don't see, uh, what's the price one pays for that? Which ultimately became the, the movie itself. Yeah. Uh, and all the writing stemmed from those questions, those ideas. Oh, that's awesome. No, because I know, um, and I know this movie, you know, to start with, I won't say had a lot of controversy, but I know you had different actors kind of lined up to play Enzo and um, Ferruccio. And, it's interesting because, uh, you know, when I first started, like, you know, researching and, and hearing about this movie, I got super excited. I was I was one of those kids who when you're growing up, you either have like the Countach poster or, you know, like the Testarossa poster on your wall. And I I had the I'm a huge Lamborghini guy. So, you know, it was interesting and, and kind of seeing, you know, thinking about Antonio Banderas, you know, being able to play Ferruccio, I was really intrigued. But then when I found out that Frank was going to be playing it and I had the pleasure of interviewing him yesterday, it was just, it just fit. And the way that his swagger was in the film and, and how he carried himself, it was just something, you know, so delightful. Um, so I guess from your point of view, obviously there's always, there's always complications and difficulties when making a movie and, and directing a movie. What were, I guess, what were some of the, the, I guess, headaches or or challenges that you had to push you? Because obviously this was filmed, you know, in in Italy, um, having Frank there and having Gabriel there. Like, how was it directing them and just the whole process of it? 
Well, you know, in terms of the casting, there are always difficulties. When we made the movie Crash, we had three different casts <laughs> because that has to do with actor schedules and your schedule when you can shoot the movie and when you can't shoot the movie. In this case, we were interrupted in years because of COVID yeah. uh, and the actor schedules. Uh, and But in the end, you know, every movie kind of finds the right actor. And boy, oh boy, I, I got really lucky with this cast. You know, I love those other actors. But Frank just became the guy. Frank just stepped into it and just assumed the position of Ferruccio Lamborghini. And, and, and uh, I, I, I was blown away by what he did. And I'm glad it sounds like you were, too. I think people, people think of Frank as an action star. But boy, he did some real work in this, doesn't he? Yes. No, he, he definitely was such a highlight um, in this film. And just uh, I think just even certain the way he carries himself, it's believable. You know how sometimes you see actors who, for example, if you see them, you're used to them in like horror movies and then all of a sudden they do an action movie and it just doesn't doesn't quite fit. Sure. But for him going from, you know, you know, action movies like we've seen him in Marvels and all this other movie and seeing him here, it was it almost felt like this was more natural for him, which yeah. was which was awesome, you know, just to see. Um, one thing that I, I did have, you know, just crazy questions on. So obviously, um, in this movie, you, you start off kind of the opening scene is, you know, with, uh, the Countach and, you know, all this, how did you handle the cars of this? Cause some of the cars that are in this movie are museum pieces for better lack of terms, you know, they're, they're like artwork. Um, how did that process go? Cause it's almost, you know, these cars in, in a sense, take, they're basically an actor in the movie. Um, so being able to handle them and all that, how was how was that process? Well, uh, you know, I, I had people who, who did that. Um, you know, somebody was in charge of all the cars and somebody else was in charge of the money, meaning how much can we pay for these cars? And then someone else was in charge of talking these people into letting us use their car and we were actually going to be using and racing them. Um, and so it was it was a long amount of negotiation in terms of time, in terms of our assuring these owners that we were going to take care of their car as if it were our own, which we did. We never, ever put any car in danger of being damaged in any way, you know, um, and we made people understand that. And they came forward and allowed us to use their cars, these cars that are their babies, you, you know. Uh, and then there's the money aspect of it. You know, the, the, there were certain cars that we wanted that we just couldn't afford. We're not a big Hollywood movie, uh, you, you know. So uh, then we had to make some adjustments and I would rewrite the script on some places where I had to. Um, but in the end, it, it worked out well. And it came from the assurances of everyone involved that we were professionals and we were going to take care of their cars, which we did. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was uh, that was one of the questions that I asked Frank if he got to... Uh actually physically drive any of these cars or if they were, you know, kind of like put on a flatbed and, and taken and he was cracking up. He's like, he's like you, cause we talked about cars a little bit. And he's like, you know how much like a mirror costs. He's like, <laughs> these are like unreplaceable museum pieces. So it was, it was interesting. And that was something, you know, that, that I, you know, I think the, the way all the cars were used was just fabulous. Um, and Sorry. no no you're perfectly fine um you know one one question that i did have obviously this movie was shot all in italy um for the most part and how was how was filming over there um you know as well, a the second I, i'm sorry interrupt you go ahead oh, no 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 just how was filming over there as opposed to you know um over let's say here in the states for example it's my second movie i shot in italy and i'm, I'm working on doing a third one um with with andrea and lady Bacardi again lady monica um, I love shooting in Italy. One of the things that people are surprised to find out is that there are such great artists working the crews in Italy. There is not one position that people are looking beyond their jobs to the greater good of the movie, which is not always the case. Uh, so, you know, very often, you know, the, the head of a department is concerned with their if it's hair and it's makeup, it's only about hair and makeup. If it's costumes, it's only about makeup, uh, costumes. But not here, um, and not not a lot of places. Most people, everybody cares about the movie, especially in New York, where I grew up. They're, they're just great crew people. In Los Angeles, I also like them very much. 
Um, in Canada, I liked them very much. So for the most part, um, the crew care about the movie for the most part. But in Italy, it's all everybody. Everybody cares about the movie. Everybody knows the movie. Everybody looks beyond their departments, which I'm really happy with. And, you know, shooting in Italy, you know, um, when you have lunch, you have lunch. You have a little bit of wine. You have a little salad. You have a little pasta. And you take you, you take your time. Uh, now, for some filmmakers, that's like, I got to get back to work. What are we doing here? How, how come he's not finished? Uh, there's none of that in Italy. You take your time, then you go back to work, which is kind of unique and different. Uh, you have to adjust your schedule a little bit, you know, because it's always rush, rush, rush in movies. Yeah. Uh, but you get used to that and you, you start to appreciate it. Oh, no, that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, um, obviously, with this movie, what was i guess um and this is almost like a two part question what was the the one scene or the one part that you're most proud of shooting um and then what's the overall message that you want to give people with this movie um so i'll start with the you know what was your your favorite scene to to actually direct in here well that's that's a great question um it's probably not going to be the answer that people expect. First of all, I, I was excited to direct all of the scenes. But I guess the scene that I was most pleased with and the scene that was the most difficult was the first or second day of shooting was that big scene in the opening of the movie with the father and son. Ah. Where he tells his father that he has a different dream for his life than the dream his father had for him. Yeah. Long, long dialogue, big open field. Um, two actors I had never worked with before. Um, and so to get that scene to a place where I was proud of it, that was really great. And that kicked off, that kicked off the rest of the movie, knowing that, okay, well, this, this is going to work out okay. And you remember the scene I'm talking about? No, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, that's a, that's a difficult scene for the actors. You know, we had crane shots and and all kinds of other stuff. There was seven actors in the scene besides the two main actors. And these uh, these two actors showed up to such an extent that after that scene, I said, okay, we're gonna be okay with this movie, I think. Oh, that's so, excellent. That, 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 that's probably one, even though I loved all the scenes in the movie. Uh, and I hope people respond to it. I, I think it's a good movie. We'll see what people say. Yeah. Um, what was the second question? And then what, what I guess, what would be your overall message that you're trying to portray in this movie? Because for me, what I got out of it is, you know, it's it's almost the the struggle and sacrifices that one one has to do to make, you know, great things happen. Um, you know, it's not like you can snap your fingers and boom, something happens. It's everyone always sees the outcome, but they never see kind of like the journey and the struggles and everything you miss out on. Um, Cause for me, one, uh, one of the more telling scenes was near the end, the, the dinner scene with him and his son. Um, that was just almost gut wrenching where he was like, Oh, you know, uh, his birthday just passed. And he was like, Oh, okay. And it, it's just, it, you kind of see how disconnected you have to kind of be in order to achieve some of these things. Um, but I guess from you, what what was, I guess, what do you think is the overall message that you're trying to portray with this movie? I wasn't trying to portray a message. What I was trying to do was ask the question of what does it take to be someone who thinks differently and approaches the level of genius? And then what's the price one pays for doing and being that? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I think those questions are put forward in the movie and i think people will decide for themselves if the price is worth it oh. that's a good question an audience i hope an audience walks out and says to themselves oh my god he changed the world and then the son says to him was it worth it papa yeah. that that's meant for the father but it's also meant for the audience yeah and myself no that's that is beautiful now this um you know i just i just want to say thank you once again i mean you you've done this movie at least from from my point of view and and a car person's point of view, you've done it so much justice, and I I truly appreciate it. Um, love everything about it, like truly, truly do. Um, definitely, just thank you for your time. Uh, and I cannot wait till you know the rest of the audience can actually see this coming out this Friday. So 
Um, hopefully everything goes well with it. And and I hope the box office, it just crushes it in the box office because it it deserves it. Let's put it that way. It definitely deserves it. Oh, hey, I really appreciate the great words. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.